All right, this video, I'm gonna do stealth mode. So I wanna turn invisible. Boom, I just turned invisible. But I can see a ghostly image of myself. That's cool, so I know where I'm at. Notice over here, I have the test server going. So it shows what everybody else sees, right? I am totally invisible until I go normal. Cool, turn invisible. Sweet. I thought that was cool and I could see myself. I could see myself, but nobody else can see me. I thought that was definitely worth doing. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and get started with that. All right, so here's a fresh world. Go to the home tab here. I'm gonna go to starter GUI. I'm gonna add my button. So screen GUI, right? Sometimes I call it starter GUI, screen GUI, and text button. Cool. All right, I'll just add it wherever I want or just move it to wherever I want. And we'll call this Stealth BTN. And let's change a few things. There's my font. Like a bangers. I'm not gonna color it or anything. We'll call this Stealth. And maybe make the text bigger. We'll hit text scaled. Cool. And I want a sound too. I want it to go when I turn invisible. So I'll go to toolbox. Audio is already selected for me. I'm gonna do power down. Power down and look for something short that's cool it's a little different than the demo i'm going to drag that in the workspace I'm going to exit that and you can see there's the sound right there in the workspace i'm going to drag it down to my button now it's so right on the stealth button cool let's add a local script to our stealth button All right local script i'm going to call this stealth loc stealth loc Cool. Now I made some templates to kind of help with the video and I have some explanations in case I miss any in my demonstrations in my, in my video. So let's go ahead and copy, go to your description, copy stealth loc from the description and paste it into this stealth loc, right? So I started here and then I end it with end stealth loc. Cool beans. All right. I have a reference to my button. And I also started this variable here for replicated storage because we want to talk to the server. We want to make things invisible on the server so nobody else can see us, right? If we just do it locally, only we'll look invisible. Everybody else will see us. So remote events, talk to the server, and they like to live in replicated storage. So we'll do a game, get service, replicated storage. All right, and then here's going to be the remote event. Let's add it first. Let's go to replicated storage. Hit the plus sign, remote event. And now we have a little doorway called Stealth RE. The RE for remote event. All right, let's make a variable for that. We'll say replicated storage, wait for child, Stealth RE. All right, this two invisible is gonna be a flag whether you're, when you hit the button, are you gonna turn invisible? If it's true, you are. If you are invisible and you hit the button again, you're going to turn opaque, normal, right? We're going to start out as false because we're going to be opaque. We're going to be normal. People are going to see us. And right here is the sound. Well, we put that on the button, right? So BTN. I'll do a wait for child because sometimes sounds are slow to load when you start the game. Wait for child. We'll get the sound and we're good to go. Let's, uh, we'll get back to this. This right here is going to be called when you press the stealth button. And how do we do that? Well, down here, Button activated is the event that fires when you press the button and it's gonna call that function on stealth. Cool. So let's go ahead and do on stealth. All right, first thing, let's get our two invisible flag and flip it. So it starts out as false. So we're gonna say not too invisible. That will make that true, right? So you just do a not and it switches it. If it was false, it's true. If it's true, it's false, All right? And we'll do stealth RE. Now we're gonna fire to the server and say, hey, uh, turn him invisible on the server so nobody can see him, All right? And then we'll do some stuff on client side here, right? If it's too invisible, then let's change the button text because since we're invisible, we don't wanna, since we're stealth already, we want it to say nor, uh, normal. And then we'll go ahead and play our sound while we're doing that. Right, and then when we switch back, we'll say stealth again.
cool. All right, let's follow this thread right here, right? We're gonna fire to the server with our two invisible flags set. Let's go to server script service, hit the plus sign, add a regular script, not a local script, a regular script. We'll call that stealth, right? And let's go back to the description in the video. Look for the stealth template that I pasted in there. Go ahead and copy it. There we go. Paste. All right, so I labeled it as stealth in server script service. I have some variables here, right? Remember, we want to get a reference to our replicated storage again. Game, get service, whoops, replicated storage, and then get our stealth RE. We have to have the, we have to have the remote event on both sides, both client and server to talk. So we'll just do our RS, wait for child, stealth RE. And then this is going to hold all the parts that turn invisible for each player, right? I'll leave that note there. All right, let's go down. Let's take a look at the bottom here. So remember that invisible parts is holding the parts for the players. If we die, I'm just gonna do some cleanup here. I'm gonna make it nil so it doesn't fill up that table bigger and bigger and bigger the longer the server's on. Same with if they're leaving, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it nil again too. So I'm just clearing out that table if we die or if we leave. All right, now this is what is going to catch that fire, that stealth RE fire client or fire server when we hit our button. So let's look at this first. All right, so you'll notice that this is an anonymous function and we're getting two variables, player and two invisible. But on the client side, we only sent two invisible that's because whenever you catch a client event on the server, well, it's a server event, right? But fired by the client, the player is going to be passed in so you know who sent it. That, that you can't help. It's always going to come like that, right? And then our two invisible flag is the next parameter that we added to that fire client. Well, the only parameter in this case. All right, so we'll say if two invisible, then we're going to turn invisible, pass the player in, else we're going to lose invisibility for the player. All right. So let's go to turn invisible. There it is. We'll get that table, that INV parts for the player. And then we're going to make, we're going to get this function. We're going to call this function, get parts for the player. Right? So we're going to get all the parts for the player that we want to turn invisible. Okay? I'm going to go up here, get parts. I make a local parts list. And then I'm going to populate that thing with what I want to turn invisible. So I'm going to need my character, right? Because that's got like hands and feet and stuff like that. So the player, whoops, character, or if the character is not ready, player dot character added wait maybe you just like respawn or something so we can just wait a second for the character to be added and we'll say if whoops no four i did a a combination there for inv in pairs we'll do the char get descendants right everything that's under the char we'll do we're gonna check so this actually this is going to be like one two three four five right it's gonna be numbers these are gonna be the parts that's what we're gonna look at so if the V is a base part and V dot name is not equal to humanoid root part humanoid root parts always invisible so we're not gonna mess with it right so we're just going to load things that are base parts, but not the humanoid root part. Did I spell that right? Humanoid. Yeah. All right. And then we'll do table dot insert. We're going to insert it into the parts list. V is going to be inserted if our conditions are met. Also, there's one other thing we want to insert. It's not a base part. It's a decal, right? So instead of that V there, let's go char dot head dot face. We got the 
face decal. Make sure you don't have like two face decals on your character or something, right? So all the decals you're gonna have to turn invisible too. I only have one on my character and most people do. So I'll just put that there. Just be advised that you might have to add to this. All right, so we got our parts. It's gonna be returned. We're gonna put those parts into that table under the player key. And then we're gonna say for i equals zero to one in steps of 0 0.05 do. This is going to be the opacity, the transparency, right? So zero is 100% opaque, you can't see through it. One is 100% transparent, you can't see it at all. But we're using decimal numbers and sometimes Lua has rounding errors. So let's just do this just to be safe so we don't have any anything that's kind of visible, right? And then we'll do a change in visible and visibility. We'll have our INV parts for the player. And then we're gonna we're gonna send in the value for the transparency right here. Let's take a look at this change in visible. There we go, change in visible up here. This one will say if parts list, right? It's gonna pass it in as parts list. Then I just wanna to check to make sure that it actually exists. We could have died, we could have left, something could have happened. We don't wanna mess up our server script waiting on a broken parts list. So we'll say for I and V in pairs, parts list, do. We're gonna say V, remember those are the parts. I is just a number, one, two, three, four, just a counter. V, transparency, oops, did I spell that right? Transparency is gonna be the T val, right? This T val was the I down here in the for loop, right? It was that number we passed in. Cool, and that's all we need to do here, right? All right, what else? Change transparency, oh, you know what? When we get to about 80%, let's send something to the client so we can say, hey, we wanna see our character a little bit, don't make them totally invisible. So I'm gonna say if I is greater than, let's say 75% for transparency, then we're gonna do a stealth RE, fire client, specify the client. This true is going to be the two invisible flag, right? I'm gonna say, hey, we're turning two invisible. And then let's send the parts list to player. There we go, player. Nice. And then we want this to happen over time gradually. So let's just do a wait in between each iteration of the for loop. Cool. While we're here, should we do lose invisibility? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So this one's not gonna, I'm not gonna do this slowly. So I'm just gonna check to see, we'll say change invisible, change invisible. And no, we don't want player change invisible parts list, right? I envy parts, right? And then the player, we're gonna make that totally opaque, no invisibility there, cool. All right, and then, and then on the lose invisibility, let's make, let's make sure that the client knows, right? We'll do a fire client, uh, we'll do a player, we'll say false, INV parts for the player. Oh, I have trouble with that, that bracket. Cool beans, what else do we should do? Oh, you know what? Since we're no longer visible, invisible, let's go ahead and clear that parts table out for the player. No, there we go, we don't want, we don't want to junk things up. Let's see, do we got everything? Do we do every, I think we did everything on the server side. We did. All right, let's go to the client side, right? Client side, we still don't have anything for our invisibility. Remember when we got to like 75%, we sent a message saying, hey, or if we lost invisibility, we sent a message saying, hey, this is gonna be caught here. You know, hey, client. So let's go ahead and look at that. All right. 
So the player dropped off because when we sent it to the player, well, it's a local player, it's a client, we know who the player is, it's assumed. So this was the second value in our fire client. It's gonna be the first value here when we catch it though. So I'll say, oh, let's, uh, what are we gonna do? Let's get, let's get our flag. I am just going to reset that flag to the new visibility flag because we actually might want to turn visible if we get hit or something, right? We might want to add that functionality. So I'm going to do that there. Cool. All right. So if to invisible, then change invisible, we'll have our parts list and then we'll make it 0.8, 80% transparent. Right, so we can see that ghostly outline. Otherwise, parts list, zero transparency. We'll be completely solid. All right, what else did we miss? This one here, right? Luckily, this one here, I think we have one over here on stealth, right? It's gonna be exactly the same. It is, it's exactly the same. Just gonna copy that. It's too bad I couldn't share I couldn't share them, but I wanted to separate the, the client and the server. There we go. Paste it. Boom. All right. Basically, we're just making it either transparent or opaque. Well, 80% transparent or fully opaque. Looking good. Let's play it. Um, I'm gonna play it with the test server. So go to test, hit this start button. It's gonna take a little bit to start up, so I'll pause the video while it's doing that. All right, here we go. We have two players. Let's go ahead and take a look at the output window down here. Just in case something weird happens and we'll hit stealth. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, you know what we could do next? Maybe the next video, cock them on the head and stun them like in World of Warcraft. That would have been cool. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's go normal. Yeah, let's try the other guy. Sweet, and you can't see them. All right, that was a success. So uh, good luck with that. Don't forget to look in the description, grab those templates. They got good explanations on them. And I will see you in the next video.